It's the 2014 draft and a 6'11 centre that weighs 300 pounds has been selected as the overall 41st pick. Was he an elite scorer? No. Was he a monster defender? No. Could he jump high? No. But he could pass. Fast forward 10 years later and Nikola Jokic is considered better than any other player with the ball in his hands. Better than any other point guard and arguably one of the best passers of all time. And he isn't the only big change in the game. Victor Wembanyama, Chet Holmgren and Alperen Sengun also seem to be killing the point guard position. But I would say they've helped the point guard evolve. In the new era of the NBA, point guards play different roles, creating systems, operating systems and enabling their stars. The art of point guards is merely changing. And here are five new age point guard roles that I'm going to help break down to you. And that's because my name is Rotomy. I love basketball, I love to talk basketball, and I hope one day you can share that same love for basketball as I. The point guard position will never die, especially because of... And Luka picks it up! Some Luka magic! Are the system point guards unstoppable because of the way the offense runs? Or is the way the offensive runs unstoppable because of the system point guards? It's a question that makes no sense, but it sits on my mind. Luka Doncic, who is heavily on ball, micromanages possessions on a granular level, becoming the offense by doing everything, scoring, rebounding, and playmaking. Steph Curry, on the other hand, gives the ball up and then becomes the offense by getting it back and lacing a three. These two point guards do not share a similar playing style, but they are connected by the fact that the offensive system has been defined by them. The dominance of a system point guard's offensive style means that coaches must create around them and the other players on the team have to complement their style. But for players like Trey Young, who are just not as talented as the other two, even if you do surround them by the right stars, they are not guaranteed wins. Trey's system comes with a trade-off, being his size and ineffectiveness on defense. It's all well and good if Trey Young gets you 30 points on offense, but it means nothing if he's giving up 30 points on defense. And that's where the questions lie if system point guards equate to winning basketball. Let's flash back to 2018, when Steph was missing Clay and Durant in the NBA Finals. Steph was the lone point guard and the Golden State system was effective until the Raptors decided to play a box on one defense. This neutralized Steph in the system and Golden State didn't have an offense anymore. Things blew up into chaos and the rest is history. Fast forward to 2022, Steph won finals MVP and a championship because his team had all their parts and counters to everything that was to come. That being said, he's an exception. No team has won in the past 20 years with a system point guard offense. That goes to show that the right system point guard can lead to a championship but it's very rare that you'll get it right and the wrong one will leave you trapped. The mellow ball looks like Lewis Hamilton sometimes on the F1 track, but then very quickly he can look like SpongeBob on a joyride. One of the issues with these players are you cannot change the system because by changing the system, you are changing them. So the best thing you can do is add to them. Think about how Siakam got traded to the Indiana Pacers and that greatly helped out Tyrese Halliburton. Or Kyrie to Doncic, which brings us to our second type. What happens when you don't luck out on a system point guard who can win it all? You have to bring in... That is one of the nastiest games I have seen in a while and to have that type of finish from Kyrie Irving. When you think of point guards now, we think of dynamic scorers running the offense. But 50 years ago, that wasn't the case. The traditional pass-first point guards were running the league. Look at players like Bob Cousy, who were known for their distribution. But a breakout point guard in Tiny Archibald was one of the first point guards to lead in assists and also scoring, which marked an expansion in the role of the point guard. And that sparked a trend in point guards that wanted to learn how to do both, looking at Isaiah Thomas, Kevin Johnson, and Stephon Marbury. But for many point guards in this type, they ended up benched, marginalized, and coaches didn't believe that they could balance both. A great example is Allen Iverson. People wonder, am I a point guard or a shooting guard? His coach, Larry Brown, didn't like him at the point guard position. And although AI wanted to learn how to find a balance between the scoring and the passing, Brown had no patience, wanted to win now, and that's where we found Allen Iverson at his iconic two-guard position. That was in 1999. The beauty of the NBA now would allow Allen Iverson, the tangent point guard, to run the show. The tangent point guard is an explosive scorer in the one position. Kyrie Irving, Damian Lillard are great examples of this. They aren't expected to distribute for the team, they are expected to score. Only 10 years ago, in the 2013-14 season, 
where their 39 occasions where a point guard took 25 shots or more. This season just gone, Luka Doncic had 33 of those occasions and 27 other point guards also had the opportunity to shoot more than 25 shots. Just taking a quick tangent, if you're enjoying the video, please drop a subscribe. After looking at LeBron James playing with Kyrie, coaches have seen the benefit of having a scoring point guard. The rules today and the way that people play have opened up the court for point guards like this to be maximized and create more opportunities for themselves to score. With stars like Nikola Jokic and other non-positional passers, tangents might be the future of the point guard position. But let me set the scene. What happens when your non-positional passer goes down with injury can your tangent point guard run the show? No. Just wow. brilliance from Jalen Brunson. When building a house, an architect designs the structure, just like a coach designing the offense. But in order for the house to come to life, you need a builder. And that's where your operator comes in. NBA offenses in the 60s and 70s were stagnant, lacking the skill and creativity to create a dynamic offense. With the arrivals like Magic and Bird in the 80s, offenses flowed more throughout the court end to end. And then in the 90s, we had Michael Jordan and the iconic triangle offense, which helped the Bulls dominate in the 90s, adding more organized movement to the NBA floor. But with all that change, the point guard position didn't really shift. You just had point guards still coming up the court, bringing up the ball and passing it off to start the offense. We are 30 years removed from the 80s and a new point guard breed has been born. The operator. They run the show. They are different from the system point guards because they operate in the system built by the coach, not a system built for them. Operators will have you constantly guessing. They know the team's defensive scheme is about them and they use that to their advantage to score and pass. Whether they have the ball in their hands or out of their hands, they are finding ways to keep the engine running. They are the ultimate one on five player. They have a constant motor when they're on the court, providing energy to keep the offense moving. Jalen Brunson displays this perfectly, finding every way to cut up an offense, using handoffs, pick and rolls, or simply setting screens. The operator's job is to constantly put pressure on the defense and have them on the back of their heels. Here are two plays where we can see operators break down the offense on and off ball. Take this play where Brunson is involved in a Spain pick and roll, whereby he screens the cutter to the basket just to set up a handoff pick and roll which results in a pocket pass and a bucket. And in this case, SGA constantly has defenses worried threatening the drive and making them dance with a masterclass in his footwork before he pulls up for a mid-range. Brunson uses his IQ, SGA uses his footwork and others use their athleticism like Donovan Mitchell or Ja Morant, who are constantly providing energy to their offense, making defenses tired. Operators can do it all and are typically the most well-rounded type of point guard on the court. The aim of these players is to be free flowing, constantly finding ways to pick and poke and destroy what is in front of them. And I tell you what, they do it quite well. But do they do it as well as... I always say I got the easy part in passing to the guys. They got to make the shots. Operators are simply playing checkers, and curators are grand chess masters. Imagine a composer creating a magical symphony with an orchestra. No matter who's in front of them, what instruments they have to play and wherever they are. A good example of this is Hans Zimmer. He's a composer who made the music for the Dark Knight trilogy and Interstellar. But he's the same man who made the music for The Lion King. And even more different, he made the Netflix. Now, let's take Chris Paul. He played curator for the iconic Lob City with two high flyers finding ways to get them the ball. Then he played curator for the Houston Rockets, a team that ran a heavily iso ball system and had easy, simple kickouts. But then he plays a completely different brand of basketball for OKC, a team of inexperienced youngsters. He still was able to curate his way to the playoffs. He had three different teams around him and found ways to make it work. That's why I love his recent trade to the Spurs. It's gonna be perfect, a curator playing with a future generational talent in Victor Wembanyama. In today's NBA, with players more skilled than ever, offenses can be difficult to run and all the pieces have to find a way to work together. A coach can create a system that works in the locker room, but on the court, someone needs to organize that. And that's where your curator comes in. Their playmaking simplifies the offenses and they understand how to get the best out of those around them. Even though the game has matured and evolved, the point guard is still necessary. And at times they don't need to be your six foot point guard like Van Fleet or CP3, 
they can actually show up looking like Derek White. He is the curator on the Celtics by definition. His main role on offense is playmaking. He creates for the Celtics team who end up playing a positionless style of basketball. I love to see a curator off the bench, especially when your bench is just terrible and you need to find a guy that can bring the best out of the players around him. Oh, great defense from Patrick Beverly in a 24 second violation. They call a travel on Booker as well. Just as much as sometimes you need a point guard to hog the ball, you also need point guards that are willing to give it up. The ones that know their place and when called upon can deliver. As easy as it sounds, it can still be difficult to get it right because you're playing with amazing stars. How can you let the stars be stars without getting in their way? Patrick Beverly is a great example of this. He is a great defender who is happy to give the ball up on offense and fits perfectly next to a guard who is wholly offensive. But what happens when you need him to shoot? or playmate. He can't do it. Then you have the polar opposites like D'Angelo Russell, who is a tangent when he wants to be, but an absolute liability because of his inconsistency on offense. And even more of a liability because his consistent crap defense. But when you get it right, you can win a championship. The acquisition of Drew Holiday simply tipped Boston over the edge. They simply got an upgrade from their first enabler, Marcus Smart. And they weren't under strain when they needed someone to playmate. Enabling doesn't always look like coming on the court and giving up the ball though. Let's take Russell Westbrook, for example. Sometimes it just means you're not on the court at all. Russell Westbrook was once a system operator, but in the last four years, he's simply become an enabler off the bench. Instead of playing with his co-stars in the starting lineup, he allows them to be themselves by not interfering. But once he comes off the bench, he becomes the player that they run the system around. And that's why he's been traded now to the Denver Nuggets because I'm assuming they want him to do that but off the bench for them. Point guards of the NBA will simply never go bust but the role of the players in the positions might simply change. We are no longer in a time where players must rebound if they're a center or shoot if they're a two. Even here already I'm sure you already disagree with some of the categories I put the players in and you aren't wrong to do so. Point guards are some of the most skilled players on the court so it's likely the best of the best are combinations of these archetypes but I wonder what that means for the other positions. Will we start to see two guards that play like bigs or power forwards becoming the most lethal shooters on the court? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you very much for getting to the end of this video. Please like and subscribe if you are enjoying this and want to see more content. And please comment down below. I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts. If you're new to basketball and want to understand more about stats, I recommend one of these videos that should pop up somewhere on the screen. And in the meantime, I want to say thank you to The Ringer because, I mean, this was a great article. I just made a video about it. But until next time.